Welcome to section 2.9b. All right, gentle people, in the last lecture, what we talked about was naming. We started off with naming ions, and then we moved our way to naming ionic compounds. In this lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to start naming molecular compounds or covalent compounds. Now, these are made from nonmetals interacting with nonmetals. So if you remember, a nonmetal tends to make negative ions. If you put two nonmetals together, you can't act ionically. Two negatives are not going to come together and they're going to repel each other. So how a nonmetal and a nonmetal come together is they're going to share electrons called a covalent bond. We're going to be talking about this bonding a little bit later down the quarter. But for now, when you see two nonmetals come together, you can say it's a molecular or covalent compound. Now the way you're going to name this is you are going to look on the periodic table. We're going to go ahead and start with the atom that is leftmost on the periodic table. If it is in the same group or in the same column, you're going to start with the lowest. Now, I'm going to give you a hint with these two things. In general, the molecular formula is going to follow these rules. There are some exceptions out there, but they're few and far between. Now, when you go ahead and order your atoms like such, what you're going to do is you're going to start out with the first element. You're just going to keep that element's name, so in this case, nitrogen. And then for the second element, what you're going to do is you're going to drop the last portion of it and replace it with IED. So in this case, oxygen becomes oxide. So you can think of naming this nonmetal as if it was an anion. It's not, but we're going to follow that same naming scheme. Then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and tell me how many of each atom is in this molecular compound. And to do this, we are going to go ahead and use prefixes. Now you guys are going to use the Greek prefixes, and you guys can go ahead and remember your shapes from elementary school. For example, a triangle is going to have three sides, a pentagon has five sides, a hexagon has six, and you can work your way down you're going to indicate the number of atoms of that particular element in the compound. So for this example, there are two nitrogens, so I'm going to put dinitrogen. There are four oxygens, so tetraoxide. So this compound right here is called dinitrogen tetraoxide. Now, there is one little rule that you should worry about, and that is you are not going to use the prefix of mono if that is the first element in your name. So let's go ahead and try to name this compound right here. So again, we have nitrogen coming first, and then fluorine is the second element, so it's going to be fluoride. Now, since there's one nitrogen here, I'm not going to put mono because it appears first. However, there are three fluorides, so this is going to be trifluoride. So nitrogen trifluoride. And for this last one here, you guys can test yourself and see if this makes sense, naming this compound tetraphosphorus decasulfide. So with that said, let's go ahead and do this quiz. So the first thing I want to say is I was a little mean with this quiz. I just talked about molecular or covalent compounds, and none of these here are molecular or covalent compounds. In fact, every single one of these things is an ionic compound. Now, I could have put this quiz in the last lecture, but I want you guys to be vigilant. The first thing you have to do is identify what type of compound, because depending on what type it is, we're going to follow different naming schemes. So for this one, what you guys can see is that the first one was the phosphate polyatomic with potassium. So potassium phosphate. The second one, iron oxide. Well, oxygen is a 2 minus, iron therefore has to be 2 plus, so that's why I get iron 2 oxide. Calcium carbonate, again, the carbonate ion is a polyatomic ion. Then lithium nitrate, again, another polyatomic. So let's take a look at why this one is wrong. So if I wanted sodium sulfate and I wanted the correct formula for this, well, I know that sodium makes Na plus ions, and I know that sulfur is two away from the noble gases, meaning that it makes two minus ions. So if I wanted to put this together, well, I need twice as much sodium as I need my sulfide. 
And so that means that this should have been Na2S because again, remember ionic compounds have to be neutral. So what I'm gonna tell you guys is be sure to know these naming schemes. I'm gonna go ahead and test you about naming covalent or molecular compounds in the next lecture. I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1A.